after defeating Leon Spinks to regain the WBA heavyweight title. Ali announced his retirement in June 1979. I want to thank my staff, Drew Bodini Brown, the man you heard in my corner all the time. Come on, champ. Nice. Champ. He made the sand flow like a butterfly, sting like a bee. He inspired me in my training. Days I don't feel good. He was come on, champ. I mean, I would go in the gymnasium and just to hear him holler. <laughs> so thank you, my friend. However, on February 14, 1980, Ali told the Associated Press that he was 75% sure that he would return to the ring. Mohammed, the $64 question, are you going to box again? I shall return. <laughs> Who do you think of the photo? I shall return. On the 2nd of October of 1980, the legend Muhammad Ali came out of retirement to fight his former sparring partner Larry Holmes in Las Vegas, Nevada with the fight estimated to have been watched by a record 2 billion worldwide. Due to concerns for Ali's health, the Nevada State Athletic Commission had the former champion examined at the Minnesota's Mayo Clinic as a prerequisite to being granted the boxing license. Ali checked into the clinic. His neurological exam was conducted and according to the report, Ali showed a slight degree of missing when he tried to touch his fingers to his nose. He had difficulty in coordinating the muscles he used to speak. He did not even hop on one foot with expected agility. The 38-year-old Muhammad Ali was past his prime and it showed as he fought. The wings of the butterfly were clipped by Holmes. When I put Ali in with Leon Spinks, who won the fight, the first fight, Ali begged me to do a rematch and I said I would do it if he promised to stop fighting, win or lose, he promised me. And three years later, he turned up fighting Larry Holmes. Why? Fight. Because, why? Because people with him liked the supply of money, I think. And secondly, maybe he missed the limelight. Whatever, whatever. I wouldn't go near it with a 10-foot pole. The morning after the fight with Holmes was released, Ali had a phone call with a veteran boxing coach, Gus Diamato. I was told that you spoke to Muhammad Ali on the phone when you were 14 years old, before you were really fight, you know, before you were professionally fighting. Is yes, that true? Yes, it's true. It's true. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, how did that come about? Well, you know, um, my adoptive father and my mentor, Customato, is a, a very close with Ali, and their birthday's on the same day, January 17th, and every day they call each other to talk crap on their birthday. You know, they're mm -hmm. arrogant ca Capricorn, so, yeah. you know, a Capricorn's never wrong, okay? Right. So, <laughs> so tomorrow anyway, would call Ali and get him on the phone Ali, if you happen to Ali be around. Ali call him, and some, no, but a lot of famous old-time fighters call cuts, and when they call him, I'm on the other phone, and I'm listening to the conversation. You creep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm in a house where, you know, I'm, 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 I'm hopeful I'm a, one day I want to be a champion fighter. And I might, and these guys are calling him. Sure. But um, he would never let me talk to him, so I sneak and I hang on the phone, because he didn't hear too well, so I, he couldn't hear me getting on the phone. I would hear him talking to Ben Jebby, all these great fighters, and Mickey Walker, and I'm thinking, mm -hmm. whoa, these are the guys I'm reading about. Yeah, yeah. And so I talked to Ali, and Ali had just lost to Larry Holmes. He just lost to Larry Holmes' fight. That night. Yeah. The next morning, they talked, they were talking on the phone. And Cus was mad they lost. And, and then after all of a sudden, he said, hold it. I got a 14-year-old kid, black kid here. He's going to be champ of the world. Tell him to listen to me, OK? Tell him to listen to me. He said, yeah. OK. And so he put me on the phone, and he was saying, he never told me to listen to Cus. He was just telling me why he lost. He took medicine. I got weak, and he's going to come back, and he's going right, to knock right. home out. But I'm crying while he's saying it. <laughs> and when I get big, I'm going to get him for you. <laughs> You, t uh, you told Ali that you would get Holmes when, when you got big? When I get big, when I get big. Not when I'm a champion, when I'm a top fighter, but when I get big, because I'm only 14. But yeah. I think when I get big, because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a DICK head, and I'm saying, I'll get him when I get big, I'm going to get him for you, you know. And I, I did get him, but I was You did get him. I mean, that's later on. What's crazy is you said that to Muhammad Ali, and then a couple of years later, you fight Larry Holmes. Well, it wasn't a couple of years later. It was six years later. Yeah, six years later. Okay, six years later, you fight... <laughs> My mistake, but you fight Larry Holmes, and what happens? Well, it happened. I was very lucky to win. Larry was pretty old at that time. Like Holmes, like Ali was old when he fought Holmes. Yeah. He was pretty old, and 38, 
and I was 20, mm -hmm. and I won. Tyson made his professional debut as an 18-year-old defeating Hector Mercedes via first-round TKO. Just so you know what a beast Tyson was, he had 15 bouts in his first year as a professional. Fighting frequently, Tyson won 26 of his first 28 fights by KO or TKO. 16 of those came in the first round, with 32 fights winning all of them, out of which 28 were KOs. Mike, the undisputed heavyweight champion, set his eyes on Larry Holmes for Ali's revenge. Mike had an upper hand coming into the fight as the 38-year-old Holmes was on the decline with two losses to his name. January 22, 1988, the stage was set as Mike Tyson was ready to take on Larry Holmes. There were a few legends in the attendance and most prominently one man, Muhammad Ali. Ali also came onto the stage to support him. He went to Mike's corner and said, destroy him Mike. The match started and from the start, Mike was out there to take Larry out. Holmes had difficulty keeping up with the younger, faster and stronger Tyson. Like many of the fighters who challenged Tyson in the past, Holmes often held Tyson to slow the aggressive Tyson down. In round 4, Holmes started well, hitting Tyson several times with his left jab. As the round went on, Tyson would continue to attack Holmes, getting him against the rope and landing right hand to the side of Holmes' head a minute into the round. After the exchange, Tyson would continue to be aggressive, causing Holmes to hold Tyson twice more. After referee Joko this broke the second hole, Tyson hit Holmes with a left jab right hand combination that sent Holmes to the canvas. Holmes was able to get back but was immediately met with a furious combination from Tyson, who knocked Holmes down for the second time with the right hook to the head. Holmes tumbled back to his feet and was able to answer the referee's count at 8. Tyson would continue to hammer Holmes' powerful combination until finally delivering the final blow with 7 seconds left in the round. A right hook that dropped Holmes for the third time in the round, after which Cortez stopped the fight and awarded Tyson the victory by technical knockout. This was it. Tyson had avenged his idol. Tyson went on to have an illustrious career that had ups and downs. With a record of total fights 58, with 50 wins, out of which 44 were knockout, 6 losses and 2 no contests. Tyson is one of the greatest if not greatest of all time, just like he wished as a kid and also fulfilled the promise he made to his idol to avenge his defeat. This is the revenge story of the unstoppable beast for his idol, the greatest Muhammad Ali.